Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, and perhaps even good evening. Welcome, everyone, from all around the world on three different platforms, all here to meet us for another exciting episode of In the Studio with Das 3D. It is so wonderful to see such a large audience, and it's so cool that we got into this weekly habit, literally, of, uh, of, of doing this. So just to give you all a bit of background uh, who are not members of the Season Pass, uh, the, the gang, the Season Pass gang and I have been uh, hanging out literally every week for the last three weeks, every Saturday around this time. And it was absolutely amazing. It was really good to get into this groove of doing something creative together, learning from one another. And it was absolutely amazing. The uh, webinars are still available to uh, to watch for Season Pass members. If you do want to join, you still can. There's a private section in the forum that we exchange, you know, anything from practical ideas to, uh, to uh, operational bits and pieces. That's a very, very cool. It's a great, great habit to get into. And so this is my fourth week streaming on the DAS channel in a row, which is super, super exciting. So wonderful to see you all. And today, of course, everything is about animations. And I'm trying to get this, um, I'm trying to get us basically for these streams, I'm trying to get us a little holding loop that looks better than the current uh, black graphic that indicates something's moving, something's happening but we like to see something more exciting. So uh, today it's all about animations and animations are a huge topic. So I won't be able to show you the whole process and the, and the many days, probably around two weeks that it takes to set this whole thing up. But I've prepared a little scene and I can show you how I arrive at values that will hopefully get us an exciting little, uh, exciting little animation. That's the plan anyway. Before we begin, my friends, let us have a quick look at the DAS front page because there is, for the next two hours, mind you, a live stream tutorial uh, sale on that gets you 80% off three select items that all need to be in your shopping cart at the same time. It is uh, right here on the front page. I believe uh, Brian and or Julia are going to post a link in the chat where you can see that because I had a look at it. I didn't know this was happening. But if you click on it, you will see that there's 593 pages full of items <laughs> available at a bargain. And it literally ends in two hours. So if you do want to snag a bargain, if you do have a second screen that you can scroll through while I'm rambling on about animations, this is your chance. Some exciting things. I might miss the sale <laughs> unless I do some shopping right now. <laughs> Very cool. There's also there's another sale on. This is the summer blowout sale. That won't end at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so in about two hours from now, but still, it's one of those things. Speaking of the Season Pass, Season Pass members and Platinum Club Plus members will have the option to enter into a funky little contest that is going on right now. And that uh, is uh, that has been opened up from Season Pass members only to also include Platinum Club members. So the theme is Pirates. It is open now. There's, I believe... 10 pieces, 10 places up for grabs. Look at that. Uh, first place, $150 store credits. Second place, $100 store credit. Third place, $75 store credit. Fourth to 10th place, $10 store credit. Very cool. Might be worth entering if you have picked up the Wolfgang bundle recently or any of the other pirate themed bundles there. Do jump in and, you know, get rendering. Contest is open until the end of the month. I think uh, all entries must be received. Yes, September the 1st. There we go. If you've missed any of our previous live streams, they are all neatly blocked together on a nice little page that DAS have created. Thank you, Travis, and thank you, your web designer, who's done a good job. I have rendered this little thumbnail. This is how we're going to start. This is where the camera is, but the camera doesn't have any animation there. This is a landing page on the DAS website in which you can see all previous and future live streams. So we're having, look at that, that's me. Unbelievable. I'm on the DAS page. That's amazing. These are the links to the previous live streams here, and future ones will be joining this page here, so you can keep track of all of the ones that you want to watch. Very cool. So yes, today I'm going to create something with this amazing bundle here. This is, well, not so much the bundle, but uh, literally one item of the bundle, the morning subway commute bundle, which is also on sale. So, you know, sale, 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 sales all around. Scene optimizer, five bucks. <gasps> that would be rude not to pick that up. We've been dealing with the scene optimizer in the season pass um, stream. There was literally, I had a scene where you had two main characters. The rest was fairly low res as well as billboards. And my eight gigabyte uh, VRAM couldn't handle it. And I had to use it. If you don't have it yet, $5 scene optimizer. Thank you so much, Brian. That is very nice. Thank you for posting that link. That is an amazing deal. It's like an essential necessity, really. 
So uh, this is the one, this is a nice bundle and I'm going to use these two products here with it. The uh, Subway Poses, there's one pose I'm going to use, but mainly star of the show, let's have a look at the Subway Tunnel environment. This is um, also up for sale. This is by Decogon Studio. These are amazing people. They make mainly game assets. So if you've uh, looked at their bits and pieces on the Unreal or, Un uh, Unreal or Unity Marketplace, they do an unbelievable amount of stuff. And I was inspired by this scene here. And I thought that was quite cool. There's robots sitting in there. There's one human. And it's, it's just a, such a wonderful, uh, surrealistic kind of atmosphere. And I wanted to recreate that and turn that into an animation. So while I'm not using this exact robot here, I'm going to use this kind of atmosphere that there's one person who's you know in the minority. And that's human and then the rest of these people are you know scary robots who are probably just commuting to work you know one of those things so beautiful environment and uh, it consists of the tunnel itself as well as the train inside the tunnel and uh, that's what i will be animating so my idea was to animate the train through the tunnel and then have a camera chase the train enter the train go through the way through the train so we see what's inside, then we pop out at the other end and go a little bit further. And then at the end, we see the DAS logo. That's where we're ending. And then, you know, that's that's the animation. And I was thinking maybe I can do that once with robots and once with gorillas. So let's see how that goes. In fact, I do have a little animatic prepared. Let me see if I can uh, find that here in the many open windows that I thought I had up. The scene is more or less a default scene that I've amended a little bit. I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you uh, Subway Tunnel renders. There we go. This is the animatic that I've made. So animatic, for those of you not quite familiar with, uh, with that terminology, means that it's a rough rendered version of the animation. So it's not a full res render, but it's something that is low resolution, lower frame rate. There's rough things around the edges. Animatics can consist of things like keyframes only. So if you have the traditional uh, onion skin animation, then often animators will draw out things that are the keyframes, which happen when a particular uh, action changes in the uh, in in the in the story that you're telling and anything in between is something called a tweener and usually not the actual animators but uh, tweener animators will deal with that so how does my hand get from here to my mouth that'll be like four or five frames in which i'm lifting my coffee mug and that's not something they would draw they would draw me holding the cup and then they would draw me drinking from the cup including you know maybe putting my head back and everything in between is a tweener and thankfully that studio can the can do the tweening for us and that is literally anything that's interpolated between any keyframe that i set so i set something on keyframe one then i move my object and the playhead over to keyframe number whatever 30 and anything in between will be interpolated so what i like to do here is change the timing that we stay inside the train a little longer so i will say we'll start here for 10 seconds we're going to get used to this environment and then around 10 seconds in we're going to go into the train so this is not not done well in the animatic this is a bit too fast i'd like to really relish the atmosphere here for about uh, 10 to 15 seconds and then i'd like to come out at the other end of the train at around about uh around about here really at uh, 20 seconds and then i have another 10 seconds on which i can settle in on my logo which might be just around the corner so this is kind of how i'm thinking about this so in order to do this i will first show you the scene and what i've made to amend this and then i will go and show you how i arrive at the exact keyframe values because i won't put those in straight in the high res scene i'm going to build a low res proxy scene for that just so that um, I get a better feel. It's, it's much easier to move low res items around just so that I get a better feel for the scene. So this is the scene that I've made. It essentially consists of the default scene of the subway train, but the, the original scene has one bend at this end and then it has another bend. Uh, can I zoom out that much? Come on. I can, I can, I can. I know I can. And it has another bend around this end. So these are the two bends and it has one section in the middle and the train is also in the middle of that center section here, that's straight. So if I were to animate that, it would mean that I don't have enough room here in the center section. Here's the train. You can see the train here. I'll show you a close-up of that in a minute. Everything is grouped together 
in the in the little um, in the scene hierarchy here. So I've got lights in one group, then I have the subway train in another group here, and then I have the tunnel, the whole tunnel is in another group, and off which there's a section missing now, so we can see that we can look inside. So what I've done then from the original scene, I've taken the original straight out and made two instances of that, which I've then bolted on one here and one here. Was it two instances or was it three instances? I can't remember. Let's have a look. I think it was two. Yeah, so it's two instances of that center section. And I've done it so that I have more time to move the train around in here. Just kind of thinking about the fact that uh, it didn't have very much room and for still images you wouldn't need it, but for animations I felt that was necessary. So that's what I've done. I've then botched the, the end and the beginning pieces here so that they, uh, that they line up nice and smooth. And that takes a couple of hours to do that. So I thought I'm not going to do that on the stream. Here's that sidewall. If I go and close that up, the tunnel is completely closed and I have a single camera, but no keyframes. These are all the lights, by the way, that come with the set. This is my, this is the scene that I've rendered the screenshot off it's slightly further to the front. So that's kind of how I've, how I've been making that, but there's no, uh, there's no uh, moving animation in there right now. So we'll start from here and we'll see how we go. We'll animate the train, we'll animate the camera, and hopefully, if we have a bit of time, we'll go and try and get some motion into the person, which is currently, oh yes, let me show you that as well. There is a few people in here, which are also made of instances. So I've put those in already. The train, I've, I've removed the walls and the roof for now, and the doors, and this all started off as a single person. Was it this guy here? Yes, White Phantom by Jerry Jang, actually. This is something, Season Pass members got this free. That was a nice surprise. <laughs> this is an outfit for Genesis 8 male. And I thought, hey, that is really nice. I'm going to give this to my only passenger. And this is really the only real guy. Everyone else on the train is also an instance. And I've made that with the multiple instances tool. So that's that's how I got so many people in there. But when uh, when Das Studio does this, it just puts them in uh, kind of in a row and I then had to go and move them into their places. So that's our that's a first group of passengers here. They've got uh, this is the first group of instances and these are the second group of instances and yeah, Das Studio will just reference those things. So this is the real object and when I say instance, then that means the uh, memory doesn't have to load two objects at the same time. It just has to load one object and it just goes and creates something like a, you could call it a shadow copy. So no additional resources are necessary inside the VRAM. So that's very, that's very, um, that's very uh, efficient memory wise. So I did the same with the, with the long stretchy tunnel sections there. Then I thought for our hero character, which we're going to create as well, uh, she is here. She's not quite in the correct position, so she would probably go and hug this, uh, this pole here. And I'd like for her to just turn the head a little bit. So that's, that's kind of the plan. As we then go out of, the, out of the other window, she looks a little bit shifty, like, what's going on here? And then we leave the train. That's the idea. Instancify actually... Oh, does it? Right. Okay. Um, Duval instancify let me refresh my memory i don't quite remember exactly what it does it there's there's one product and i think that's what it is it turns instances into real geometry or real geometry into instances i think that's the one i think that's the one there's two products that do more or less the opposite of one another and instancify is one of those things uh, you can use uh, there's a, there's a diner scene for example also by decogon studios very very nice it has a lot of coffee cups stacked up on uh, on tables and has a lot of tables, but they're all real copies. So that's very heavy on the uh, on the on the memory. So Instancify could go through and look at it and say, "Hey, I found this object about twelve times in your scene. Would you like me to create?" one real object and make 11 instances and put them in the same places. So that's what that does. It can make your scene lighter. There's another one. This, this sometimes instances have issues sometimes when you export the set into a game engine like Unreal Engine and for the fact that instances don't really exist. And sometimes when you export something, it 
uh, it gets confused by the fact that the instance doesn't actually exist as an empty placeholder uh, object there or like an, an empty wall or something like that. Uh, and when you use Instancify, sorry, when you use this other script that's not Instancify, which I've, I'm so, so sorry that I've forgotten about that, um, it will do uh, the opposite. It will essentially look at what's an instance in your scene and then swap that out for real geometry. And that is good for export because in an export, you have to have real geometry. Otherwise, you know, it's uh, difficult for the target application to understand that oh it's by totted oh, of course it would be totted if you're watching hello very good to see you <laughs> if you're not then your wife hasn't allowed you to um, you know to be with us today to get the timings of our animation right i'm going to go and start with the brand new scene and i'm going to have a little fiddle around this uh, the first thing i'm going to create is and I, I recommend you use this workflow because it's it's one of those things. Animations are very, you can get lost in animation. So let's go and bring one primitive in, which is a cube. And that's going to be our train. It doesn't look very exciting right now. So I might give it a color so that we know this thing isn't just white or gray. I might go and make that green. There we go. That's, that's the, the green train. This is our train. I might also stretch it out so that we that we know that it is a train. So this is, you know, this, we can kind of kind of understand this is a train now. Uh, I might even call that train in my scene hierarchy here. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna create another thing, which is a cone. I could create a camera, but I think a cone is easier to see visually. So that lines that allows me to uh, pick where what keyframe needs to be. So let's do that. That is available as a cone indeed there we go and i would imagine do we need y up i think we might we might do here's a cone cone is kind of buried inside the train uh here it is yeah i can i think i work with that can i work with that and just go and turn that over like so uh, yeah let's do that that's cool it might need to be a little bit uh bigger i think we're i think we're gonna be all right i think we're gonna be able to see this is the camera Kind of like this. I'm just going to turn it around, neat and tidy, minus 90. And then I'll go and, uh, and maybe just push this guy down a little bit so that he's he's on the center and he's also kind of on the center. It doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, it's just, for me, a visual indication of what is what. So this, I might make that blue. So this one is my camera. And it'll all become more clear uh, as we as we see what I'm trying to do here. So I'm going to go out a lot, and the the actual placement of my items doesn't matter that much. Uh, it's just indicative of the timing that I'm going to try and create. So with these guys in this place, I might actually go and save my scene. <laughs> That is uh, something I, I do like to do. I've mapped my own library up here. I'm going to go and create a brand new uh, directory here. If I can find it, create soft folder. That's what I was talking about. And I'll call that stream scenes. Just so that you don't get confused of what's something that I might have made earlier in the process. So we'll just go and uh, go make a couple of empty folders. So stream scenes. We'll need stream characters and we need stream poses a little later on so this is kind of a nice setup here oh yeah let, as i said save the scene duh good idea so i'll call this one timings just so that in case something untoward happens we can easily bring it back so um what i'll do now is I'll have a think about how long my animation needs to be, like the real one, not so much this one, but I will use the same keyframe values for that. So I'm envisioning something that will be between 20 and 30 seconds long. It's kind of a good thing to think about it. How long does your animation need to be? How many frames per second are you shooting at? And that gives you an indication of where every second a keyframe might be or where your timing needs to be. So it's kind of, you know, one of those things you want to think about. So I'm thinking, 
it, it might not be entirely 30 seconds, but there's always a little bit of pre-roll and a little bit of post-roll that might be cut off in post-production. So I'm envisioning 30 seconds. And just for the record, I'm going to think at 30 frames because that's fairly easy. We don't have to render it at 30 frames. We can render it at a higher frame rate if we want it. But for now, let's go and think in 30 frames, which means at 30 seconds, that is roundabout 900 frames. And that is the first thing that I need to tell Das Studio so that my timeline from left to right will will reach for that long. So let's go and do that. That's at the bottom left here. This is on the regular timeline, not the animate timeline. And uh, Das Studio has a habit of saying, well, if you want 900 frames, that'll be frame zero to frame 899. But I would like to really set a keyframe on frame 900. That's kind of, that's just me. So I'm going to have to give this, under total, I'm going to have to give this one extra frame. So I'm going to have to type in 901. And you can see that my timeline changes and now has 900 frames, which is quite nice. So this is how I can now think about where does what need to happen uh, around around which roughly which which frame so i said before that i'd like my camera to go around for about 10 seconds and then enter the train so then mentally i know well, mentally like in my mind in my mind's eye i know that at around uh, 10 seconds in which is about uh, let's say 300 300th frame around that time my camera needs to go and enter the train the train needs to move for the whole duration and the train needs to stop moving so that my camera can exit and do something else in the tunnel so as i said 10 seconds going into the train then i'll spend about 15 seconds inside the train then i exit the train and then i have say another 10 seconds outside the train so that means for my train object it needs to start moving on the first frame so on the first frame let me go and put a keyframe in here that's this little guy here that sets a keyframe at this position i'll go into parameters and have a look at my translational values here and now i'm going to go and say well the camera needs to be out of my train at around well let's just say around frame 650 700 so i'll say my train is going to stop moving at around this point Six, let's say let's say 600 we can always change the timing later but i think that's a good idea the train moves from there to about here doesn't really matter how far but that should do the trick so first i've set a keyframe on the zero and then i've moved my playhead and now moving the train object forward so if i now go and move my playhead you can see that the train is now interpolating which is nice. So this is kind of the, this is the what the tweeners would do if this was a major Hollywood uh, production, or probably more like these days a computer program. But that used to be an actual job at Disney, you know, tweener. Very cool. There. Now let's go and see what the camera does in this linear motion. I said at around frame 300, we want to go and enter the train. I think I might make that a little bit earlier. I might make that, uh, I might make that frame 250. So once again, my camera also starts moving at frame zero. So with my camera object selected, I'll go and set a keyframe here. If I don't do that, Das Studio doesn't recognize that these are values I'd like to save. So even if I want to start here and I'm not moving my object, if I want this to be a keyframe between which I can interpolate, I need to set a keyframe manually. So then I'll go and say, maybe frame 200, maybe frame 250, something like that. I'd like the train, the, I'd like the camera to enter. So I'll park my playhead here and go and move the camera so that it meets the train. Do you know what? I can actually go and and make the train slightly translucent just so that we can see the camera inside it so i'll just drop its opacity down a little bit yeah like this there this allows me to see the camera inside the train where exactly it is so the train has this little window that i'd like to pop through so and it's it's difficult to get that timing right so i'm just going to go on this keyframe the camera has just entered 
Then we'll go and stay inside the train for a while. So currently my camera's moving, but it's not moving further inside the train. So I'll go and move things a little bit further. And then maybe just before the train stops here, I'd like my camera to exit. That's right here. Maybe like at frame 500, perhaps. Something like that. And I'll see if that gives me enough uh, time inside the train. So at that point, I'd like my camera to just about exit the train. But then, of course, I don't want my camera to stop at that point. So now it goes into the train, filming the inside of the train. I would also, I would not want it to stop there. I'd like my camera to keep going to, say, frame 9, to frame 800, something along those lines. So on here with the camera selected, I would like for that to then go follow along until it reaches my next target, which is the DAS logo. So this is speeding it up uh, towards the end. I'm not sure if that's going to look good or not. If it doesn't, we'll go and change the timings or the positions. And this is what this exercise is for, really. We're going we're gonna to see how, are these key, how would these keyframes work in real life. There we go. Let's go do this. Tr camera approaches train. Train also starts speeding up. So train currently isn't moving in a linear fashion. Now cameras inside the train gives us a delicious look of what's happening inside. And then camera goes and moves out and just does something else in the tunnel. Finds the DAS logo somewhere here and ends up on the DAS logo. So in regards to timing, I can already see this is actually much slower than I had expected it to be. This is good to know. So maybe we don't need all the 30 seconds that I had envisioned. But this is what this animatic timing thing is going gonna, is gonna to show you. Unless I've made a, you know, that's, that's it. That's kind of 10 seconds. We're in the train. <laughs> and then we're exiting the train. And it's certainly much slower than it was in this in the cinematic in the animatic but also don't forget that once we see this all all this stuff happening then it'll be it'll be good to give it more time because we want to relish this moment but it looks like i'm gonna be okay with 800 frames might even stop my camera uh, slightly beforehand and make some mental notes of these values so that's kind of important i might even go and enter the train a little bit earlier so at frame 200, exiting is probably okay. Train stopping is also fine. And I think I might stop the camera a little bit earlier than that as well. So I might go and make that frame 700. Let's do that. that that's, you know, that's good for render time as well. <laughs> So with uh, moving keyframes is a, is a tricky job. And this is something that uh, if you've looked into animations in Dash Studio, that might be really confusing. So let me just let me just show you how I do it. There is this keyframe here on the camera track. This is the camera, the yellow one. I'm going to go and drag this, drag a little rectangle around it and just go and left click and drag this guy over that sometimes works sometimes like in this scenario it does not so it really depends on how das studio feels about you if it doesn't do what you expect it to do that's totally fine the specialty here about this triangle is that it's not actually one keyframe it's a group of keyframes this just tells you somewhere underneath me there's keyframes uh, if I were to open my camera here in this track there, I find that properties here and I find general and I find transforms and all these things have still have triangles and you think, what's going on? So if you go and open tr uh, translation here and I've moved along the X translate, you'll find that this is the actual keyframe. So the thing that has currently got, the, it's like a little circle that has a letter in the middle. Mine's currently got the letter T in it and that probably moves better than the triangle. So sometimes the triangle moves as well, but not all the time. I don't really know why that is. So this one, if I left click and drag on this one, then I can see that my camera is moving to a different position here. That's not the only way you can move it. You can also go and uh, copy. So if you had multiple keyframes underneath that little triangle, that might be very cumbersome. I mean, you can, if you had multiple, you can go and just uh, drag around multiple keyframes. Like here in the beginning, I have the translation uh, for X, Y, and Z. So I can just go and uh, left click and drag uh, a little 
marquee around that. That's possible. But, um, you know, sometimes there's so many that even this would be very difficult. So at that point, you can also go and uh, use that triangle again and instead of dragging the triangle you can go and uh, drag a drag a, a marquee around it and then right click on it and copy the selected keys so that'll copy all the keyframes underneath that triangle if i do that and then i go and move my playhead to another position say behind here let's see or maybe just you know like 650 and then i go and do that again right click and paste my keys then you'll see that there's another little triangle now and that will have copied all the keyframes from here so if you can't left click and drag it do copy paste that'll that'll also be fine if you don't need the one behind it anymore you can just uh, go and uh, drag a marquee around it do not press delete very important <laughs> hit right click and then delete the keys that'll do the trick i won't do that here because i'm kind of happy with this with them in place here right now so i'll go and delete this one instead delete keys all of them here there we go so that's kind of that's kind of what we kind of what we want here enter train stay in train go back there's something else we could play with and that is the interpolation of not so much the camera but of the train so currently the train accelerates gets to full speed and then decelerates and the result is that in the middle of it the motion is actually faster than at the beginning and at the end yet the middle bit is really what i'm interested in so i'd rather that wouldn't be as fast as it is right now so we can try to change the interpolation of these keyframes of the train so that it doesn't do this with acceleration deceleration that it actually goes and moves at a constant speed what this will also do is our entry and exit keyframes into and out of the train are going to be uh, I need will need to be changed, but I would like to try it out and see see what happens. So that happens by um, by now clicking on these little rectangle or triangles for the train. You can do uh, both at the same time if you're lucky, or you can just go and uh, drag a marquee around here, like so. I see sometimes you select more than you had bargained for. Let's try that. It's, it might be a bit difficult to see on the stream. Yeah, it's a bit difficult. So I'm going to go and uh, just go. Oh, there we go. I think I've got them both. Um, and I can either right click and change the interpolation here. Set key interpolation to linear. So TCB is the logarithmic one, the uh, accelerate and then decelerate again. Uh, constant is an immediate change from one to the other value. Literally, there's no interpolation. It just goes from zero to one there's no there's no interpolation there and uh, linear is the one that goes like a line so there's no acceleration deceleration i can do that or i can go and use this little guy down here that's the interpolation menu that'll that'll have the same effect and you can also you can see that change on the actual keyframe so if i go and open this up now under general transforms and uh, translation now my little keyframes here they don't have a t in it anymore they are no longer round either they now they look uh, they look like um diamond shape and they have a little l in the middle which means um linear so let's see what this looks like and take a look at the camera so the train is now gonna gonna not speed up and slow down this has an impact on what a camera does it still enters the train it stays in the train hopefully a little bit longer or it'll exit the train faster yes i see it'll, it'll exit the train faster look at that it shouldn't really be out here it should out, should be out here so i think i might do that yeah so keep so around frame 500 was when i wanted my camera to exit that's good to know this was that keyframe here it's not exactly frame 500 it is uh, somewhere else so i got to make sure that if i wanted to change the position of this keyframe i need to be exactly on that keyframe and the easiest thing to do that is to change to select the object in question so select your camera don't just 
be in front of it or behind it. Make sure you're on that keyframe so that the actual keyframe gets changed. And then go use these little navigational bits and pieces at the bottom here. This is skip to the next keyframe. So this is play. This is a step to the next frame like so. But then this one after that, this is skip to the next keyframe. And that should go and put me right on the keyframe on the next one I can see. That's another animation tip I can give you. Make sure you use as few keyframes for your interpolation as possible. If you use too many, then there's a lot of interpolation going on. A lot of things can go wrong and, you know, it's not going to be pretty. I'm not going to lie to you. Now that I'm on this keyframe, I can just go and move my camera back and say, you're just exiting at that point. And then hopefully that's going to make my, my motion a little bit, um, a little bit prettier. Once I've done all this, I have to remember it and then apply it to my high-res object. But um, the good thing about doing it this way is that I have... Uh, it's, it's much easier for Dastu to, to give me that preview. We're joining the tunnel, we're going into the train. I see this could also be changed. I think I need to be a little bit faster in the beginning. And then I'm um, kind of coming out. And then that's it. I'm happy to go faster now and end on the Das logo somewhere here. That's cool. Camera, I'm happy with it being logarithmic. That's that's okay for me. I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah, let's go and tweak the tweak the um, the entrance into the train. So I want to be in the train right now. So once again, with the camera selected, go to the next keyframe. Here I am, and that needs to be inside the train already. So that'll now look like my camera is kind of speeding up, but that's what we're doing. The train is slower, the camera's faster. And hopefully at some point, catches up. There we go. If it's not snappy enough, we'll see that visually. We'll cut that bit off or make that bit, you know, take that bit out um, once we see the animatic, which I hope we will today. That'd be quite nice. So there we have it. That's our basic motion done. And uh, this also, I'm going to go and save this over. Uh, this is a great little test piece. If you're about to build your animation and you want to put a character in it, for example, and you have this difficulty that you say, hey, the character now needs to move with the train, then you can build it uh, outside the high-res scene and go and put the import the character in uh, with animations and all, put it into a null, and then take the null and move it into the position of the train, parent it underneath the train, and then all the animations of the character will happen inside the null, which then will be moved by the train, so you don't have any uh, issues with... Um, positions changing into something that you didn't that you hadn't expected so one of those things so i think the timing is, is kind of, we can probably remember it here I, I don't know should i usually what i do is i take a i just take a text document and just uh, write out where the keyframes for which item need to be so that i'm absolutely happy and do you want in fact i might just i might actually just do that i might just use my website for that that's why I often make notes and uh, the upside is I can also go and show you uh, what, um, you know, what's, uh, what, if, if, I've, if I've written something up, I can, then, I can then share that with you. So I might just go and do that. Go and grab myself a new post and call it uh, Subway Animation. There. So I'll say the train needs to go from frame 0 to frame 250, enters the train at 250, enters, oh that's sorry, that's the train, isn't it? Sorry, I meant the, ca the camera. <laughs> so enters train at 250. It's really important. The moment you deal with the high-res assets and you see so much stuff in your scene library, Starts at zero, enters train at 250, exits train at 500, at 500, and then 
600 is not its keyframe. Stops at 700 on the DAS logo. That's cool. Stops at 700 on DAS logo, or on on whatever you want to um, on whatever you want to, uh, to portray. So next week I'm gonna build a little animation for my buddy Chris, who streams over on Twitch, which is gonna be nice. He's thinking of doing a YouTube series, and he needs a little like five six second sting, and I'll animate that for him. Just basically like that. So let's see then the cam that that was the camera. The train starts at zero and stops at six hundred. That's all I need to know here. Starts. Whoops. Hello starts at zero and uh, stops at did i say 600 i think so right yeah there we go this might seem overly complex to make all these notes but it'll really save your life if you have characters if you have multiple objects moving you've got to have something in germany we used to call that a far plan which is essentially like a like a timetable yes and i'm going to save that thank you linus let's apply this to a high-res scene Oh yes, total duration. We don't need to go really behind beyond uh, 700. So that's another uh, good note to make. Total duration, 700 frames. Oh, and I'll show you something else that's uh, that's quite nice about Das Studio and how it uh, how it thinks about animation. So the, I don't know if you're familiar with the with the. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with. Uh, with the impact of frames per second on your animation. Higher frames per second mean you have to render more frames per second to be displayed. Lower amount of frames per second means that your footage looks a little bit jittery, like in my animatic that looked about, um, do I still have it here? That was rendered with 15 frames a second. So that's why you can see this, this you know, this, this shuttering motion going on there. And uh, that's the result of the uh, of 15 frames a second. But I did that for the animatic because it's much faster to render that way. Uh, and for your for your final animation, 24 and 30 frames are kind of good, super extremely smooth stuff like game footage that is often uh, displayed at something even higher than 60 frames a second. So at the bottom left here, Das Studio can 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 interpolate this for you under FPS. This is kind of nice. So I, during the animation, I think in 30 frames a second, but if I want to render the final thing out for it to look absolutely super top notch, I would render this in 60 frames a second. And this is quite nice how Das Studio interpolates it. So if I switch this over to 60 frames a second, look, watch what happens to the position of the keyframe. So if I go switch that to 60 now, the keyframes themselves visually stay at the same position but you see a lot more black stuff around here in the middle and that is that studio essentially saying hey i'm gonna i'm gonna interpolate this over more frames so the motion becomes smoother but you don't have to worry about resetting keyframes so it is kind of odd to think that our camera now enters the train at frame 500 but that's okay because that studio kind of worked that out so it kind of can i can change this back to 30 and then we're back to the previous value here. Likewise, if you're rendering an animatic, you might think, hey, perhaps I'm actually okay with 10 frames a second. So you have a lot less frames to render. Uh, it'll look a little bit more jittery, but it'll still give you good insight of, um, of the timing there. So that's, that's kind of important to remember. So I, I go and plan this in 30 frames a second, but that's not what I'm rendering at. I'm going to go and do this here, Subway Tunnel V6, I think that, no, Subway Start. This is my starting scene. I've just saved it, so that's that's all good. PS2 games were very good, though, yes. Could well be X201, that is absolutely possible, because weirdly enough, and to this date, uh, TV shows like drama shows, that use uh, that even use video to this day, they're still shot at 24 frames a second because that's a look and feel we perceive as this is a movie. Whereas when something is shot at 50 or 60 frames a second, then we associate that, and this is totally by pure habit, we associate that with this is news footage, this is some cheap video, and this is just the association that we have with it, bizarrely. But um, that is why that's done. So it's not because they can't do it, they can very well shoot at 8K 120 frames a second these days, but they choose not to distribute it that way because 
our viewing habit kind of says, hey, hang on a minute, that doesn't look right. And we, bizarrely, we prefer this jittery kind of 24 frames a second look. There's something else that's quite interesting about this, um, about this uh, technique. There's something called um, uh, pull down, I think. If you think about 30 frames versus 24 frames a second, if you're doing a telecine of a 24 frame a second movie to be... Uh, broadcast in the US with like 30 slash 60 frames a second, you basically alternate how many times the first frame versus the second frame is displayed. First frame, two frames, second frame, three, sec third frame, two again. It's, it's complicated. It's complicated. Okay, let's go move out here. And uh, thankfully, all my bits and pieces are kind of in place. I said I need to have uh, 701 frames in total at 30 frames a second. And my train is going to start kind of over here, much like where my camera is. Where's my camera? Camera's over here. That's, that's good to know. So let's go and park the train at our first frame. We're going to go and animate the train first. So this is the tunnel. The subway train is here. This is going to be the whole... Oh, it's already here. Perfect. Is it? Yes, it is. Perfect. And my camera, just so that I can see the two next to one another, that's my camera. Is this really what I want, want it to look like? Yes. So I want, to sp I want to start kind of behind the train so I have all this way to catch up to the train. Okay, let's get the train moving. with the train and only the train selected and this is basically this is an empty which then has both the passengers and the train so that's how i've done it the passengers are part of this empty here and the train is its own you know it's its own entity there so i'm going to i'm going to select this whole top group here i'm going to go and select i'm going to set a keyframe on it and because this is kind of how my mind works, I've already forgotten where the train needs to be at which point. So it needs to start, obviously, uh, at frame zero and stops at frame 600. That's kind of that's good to know. And so how far it needs to move is literally only determined by the length of the... Uh, of the tunnel so i'm going to have it move to about here and then uh, get the and then get the camera out so kind of about here but before i do that i need to go and park it on frame kind of what was it 500 this is how my brain works i've already forgotten it stops at 600 really and then we only have 100 frames to get out really what's the, I, are we sure about this Yes, absolutely. Stops at 600 because camera exits at 500. How easily you can get yourself confused. I can go and I've, I've got frame 500 right here. But if, I, uh, if it's difficult to see, you can just type this number in here. So 500 it is. And I'll go and move the train over to somewhere like here. At which point I'd like the camera to be out of it. That's going to be okay. See if it moves. It does, but a lot less smooth than it did before because Dash Studio has a lot of heavy geometry now to um, to move. So okay, it does that. That is that is good. Number one, excellent. Let's worry about the camera. Not so much rotationally where it's looking, but where it's how it's going to go. So once again, back here, this we've, we're done with that. Starts at zero, enters train at 250. So that's good to know. Train at 250, leaves train at 500. Okay. So enters train at 250. Uh, let me just go and type this in so that I'm on this exact frame here. 250. Train's already uh, gone away. Control F will bring my train into focus once once selected. And I'll go and select my camera. And because it's kind of far away, I'm going to just use a parameter to dial it towards it. And we're moving it in the X direction. So X translate. Whoop, sorry. Did I actually set a keyframe on this current position for the camera? 
I don't remember. I'm just going to do it again because a forgetful sort of fella. <laughs> Add frame 250. And let's park the current, sorry. What am I doing here? Range. No, range is still 700, isn't it? Use the wrong thing here. So that is supposed to be 250. Yeah. Perfect. Now, camera X translate. Look at it go and come in at one point. There it is. That's my camera. And it enters the train at this point. So we need to change the the Y and Z position. This is basically just getting the getting the X position right. It's going right into the train. Okay then. Now it exits the train at 500. So let's go to frame 500 and go and focus in on the train. Here it is. And go to the back of the train, go to the camera again and go with the keyframe right here. Let's go and see where it is. There it is. Perfect. Here's the camera. And let's go and have it exit right there. Yes, and the train should be set to linear. Thank you. Very good point. Why didn't I think of that? Mr. Brian, thank you so much. Meet my team of moderators, by the way. It is Brian, that is AKA Zero Kelvin. Then there's Nathan, AKA Dragonade. And of course, there's Julia, AKA Julia V1. So thank you so much for reminding me of that. I appreciate that. Let's do this. Subway train. It is the whole empty right here. That is very valuable information there. Does it see now this is, I might just do it one by one. This here, I just go click that little guy to linear and then I'll click this. And th it's important because it has an impact on where the train is at any given time. So very important. We might see it moving, not right now, but the moment I go and move the playhead back and forth, it'll have an impact. So it means we have to go and correct our first camera keyframe. Let's camera go to the next keyframe. You can also see how this can easily, easily run quite a few hours, this getting animations right. Hey, see, this is exactly what Brian was talking about. We're in the train uh, too fast. Actually, it's, are we okay here? Kind of, are we kind of okay, are we? We're not actually in the train at all, so we're gonna correct that in a moment, but I think the, just the X is probably fine. Go to here, train, just to frame up, and there's the camera. It's just coming out now, all right. And then did we say, and I will check if the train is actually set to linear in a moment. I will. I said it'll stop at 700, at which point we're going to see a DAS logo. So I haven't actually put that in. That'll be in, in here somewhere. Let's go and open that tunnel wall up as well. So maybe just around the corner. Uh, maybe I'll go and, uh, do I have anything? I don't know if I have anything. Oh, I might have something like, uh, like one of the gray box freebies uh, that I've made for the season pass too. That was, that was kind of nice. Let's see if I can bring in one of those. And that was, that was under, that's a blender project, isn't it? Gray box kit freebie. There we go. That's it. I'll just do this so that I can put a dummy object in here. We're going to make it a a, a person, but this is going to be the DAS logo. Imagine this is going to be the DAS logo on which our train needs to end up. So uh, camera needs to go and move on until kind of frame 700. And that's a straight linear action kind of to over here. There. 
we may introduce something like a like a rotational keyframe there but you know in 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 principle in principle this should be that now let's see how this how this fares in in reality so it'll be tricky to uh, to see this whole thing zooming in and out wise but uh, bear with me here so i've got the camera from here to there and i've got the uh, the tunnel sorry the tunnel and the camera not the tunnel the like this bit here off the tunnel plus the camera plus the train and that should frame us all of this up okay let's see what this looks like so it's going to be it's going to be fairly rocky but we'll see if the theory is correct that the train so das can the das studio can barely do the can barely do the frame rates uh like maybe you know two frames a second we're staying in the train quite nicely and we're exiting the train quite nicely too so that should give us uh you know quite a bit of um quite a bit of uh spectating to do inside the train totally gonna save absolutely notice also as how the frame rate uh improves the moment the train stops moving it's because the train is quite heavy geometry with all the uh people in there see now and boom it just goes and does it fairly fluently i might i might move the camera a little bit um further in the tunnel i think it'll be it'll be it's probably gonna work it's probably going to work. I think timing-wise, I'm good with this. I'm timing-wise, I'm I'm okay with this. So all we need to do next is, and I might just actually just switch off the passengers inside the train. That might make it a bit faster, because we're gonna. This is the other thing about animations. You're gonna have to look at this so many many times. Because now we're gonna. The next thing we're gonna do is make sure the camera enters at the correct hole in the train so that's the same keyframes we just need to change the rotation and a bit of perspective there and as we travel along we need to go and uh, have the camera kind of look left and right and hopefully if i if i can make it i'd like to animate the figure on the train as well come on let's do this thing so first of all save this save it all save it all perhaps on frame uh, zero and I'm going to call this stream scene so I'm going to make a new uh, subdirectory here just so that once again that we have uh, oh that's time we've got that already stream scenes perfect let's go and put that in a new scene and call it subway v1 there we go save then do the thing yes you even better even better that's true we can do that that is a good idea a cube or a null and that would then animate the camera's look at direction so that's a that's a very clever idea i might do that that's a very clever idea thank you <laughs> control s yes all the time i would love to see this clever implementation of of autosave i gotta say inside das studio i can't wait for that uh if i mean if it is if it will be implemented i don't really know that you know like the one that unreal engine has where you go and uh, or rather than it just going and auto saving and maybe interrupting your work for a few seconds on larger scenes i would love it if there's a pop-up that comes up and says hey i'm gonna auto save in you know 20 seconds are you okay with that then do nothing if you don't want this to happen dismiss that'd be good i also heard this uh this philosophy that we are the masters of our own save button look at that this is what this looks like now going into the train we're at completely the wrong uh, angle this looked really nice though when we started but it's not going to look good when we enter the train so let's go and move my camera to the next keyframe it's very important to be on this keyframe and uh, i'm not going to use the viewport adjustments to find my exact position here i'm going to use the parameters and the reason why i'm doing that is because sometimes the uh the um 
manipulator type can change from local to world and that is sometimes a death death sentence when you're when you're then animating over zero so all of a sudden you see your camera kind of turn around and spin around you have to kind of even that out so i'm going to go and uh, and not touch this and just go and uh, play with the translational and rotational values here so let's go translate first x is kind of fine i don't want to mess with that that's the forward motion uh, visiting the train uh, y is up and down and z is left and right so let's go and move this guy over to slightly further up i guess i also bring my passengers back in the train hello robots how you doing and then we go uh and then we go z so it looks like we're all already kind of inside the train a little uh a little too much i'm gonna have a look from the top where my camera where my camera is just so that i get uh, that i get a little look see over my oops i'm sorry rotation y just so that it looks straight ahead i'd like to just uh, look straight into the into the train for now if i wanted to creatively turn left and right i'll do that later so that's there then inside the camera this is what it looks so i'm thinking perhaps we can go up a little bit in fact i think i might also go uh, back a little bit just so that i know that i'm hitting the window so this is now the position at which my which my um my camera hits for this i'm thinking of turning on the aspect frame so that i know exactly what will be uh, what what i'll hit and also to really make it absolutely in the middle i'm going to go and turn on the thirds guide here so that i know this is kind of where i want to where I want to hit the train. So let's go up this. We're still on the same keyframe as we were before. This is fairly in the middle. I think the only thing that we want to change is a little bit of the the old X rotation. So I'm going to try and hit it kind of this way, like minus 180 is exactly what we want. And then the Z rotate is also minus 180. So it's just straight, straight in there. And it's going to look great. Yeah, straight in the hole. Oops. All right. Let's preview this with as as good a frame rate as we can. This is where filament really shines. I think texture shaded is uh, is kind of struggling with this. There we go. We're going in here. And what I perceive to be a little bit too slow is already turning out to be the perfect timing, actually. And here we exit it. So that's that's nice. Wow. And we're still straight. So that's that's cool. Yeah, I think I'm going to go and let the camera go a little bit further around the corner, maybe. I'll make it as full frame for you as I can. So, so far, I'm, I'm actually very happy. And this is just a basic that we've done with a few keyframes and clever planning. It did take us just over an hour, but, you know, it's, uh, it's nice. I, I, think, I think it was worth the effort. Apricot Dog, hello, how you doing? Good to see you. It would be nice to make the final keyframe of the train at frame 600. That way the train won't stop as soon as the camera leaves it. Uh, and it was planned that way. But I don't actually see that though. So the moment I have the train, uh, I've passed the train, it doesn't really matter what happens to the train, right? Because it doesn't noticeably slow down for me here. I'm just going to go and exit it. And I don't see it stopping as such. You know, it stops behind me, but I don't really see this as a viewer. So I think I'm okay with that. I think the only thing I might do is my end frame of the camera, I might just move that forward a little bit. Forward a tiny bit. Just so that I can go and, uh, and turn into the corner here. Yeah, I think it would be nice if the logo would be around the corner. But that's something I might do that uh, off the stream. I think let's focus on uh, getting f saving first of all. That is, that's a good start, isn't it? 
saving this and then going and trying to get the our hero character in place and hoping that the camera isn't going to hit her give her some clothing and also try to make her move a little bit just subtly i would like to try that I think this for now is kind of a, a good basis. I think this is, you know, sometimes simplicity is the key. If you make things too complicated with too many keyframes, that could be a problem. So this is now, I'm going to call this one Subway V2. Right, I, I get you, Zerba. Tell you what, let's let's make that decision once we see the real, once we see an animatic. If we do find that weird, then we can always, you know, uh, change it at that point. Let me go and show you the the tentative position of my of my hero character. So she she is, but that's not really her final position. So she would much be be much better off uh clinging to this and also hopefully be a little bit out of the way so the camera kind of goes this way so then she is going to be she's going to be somewhere here but what i'd like for her to do is to uh, well hold this first of all and then also maybe go and uh, look around just turn her head a little bit so currently she's not going to do anything and we're going to leave her in place and uh, do this in a sub scene in an empty scene and then we can we can have a look at an outfit and give a give a something to wear and we can also go and uh, play around with the head movement and where that needs to be in the scene let's do that so we've saved this new scene i'm thinking the track is off the track <laughs> ouch <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrible. Well, the good thing is here, the robots were going to take care of it. The robots are going to take care of it. We're going to be out of the train when that happens, so we're, we're good. I've noticed, actually, that the, that the size of the humans inside the train isn't... So it's not quite to scale. So when you go and... Um, can you fix the train on the rails? Um, well, the the thing is, I, I I don't really see a problem with it right now. Is it was it in the beginning? Is that is that something that you saw there? Well, I'm gonna I'm happy to have a look at that. Was it the same in the animatic? Because I don't remember it to be that way. Oh, that you mean? Yes, I see you. I see you. I see you. It's it's just the left right position, right? You just want the train to be moved slightly to the right. Is that correct? I think that's a that's a fix we can make. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let's build our character and then we're gonna before we put her in, we're gonna go and fix that. Because I think to be to be brutally honest, we only need to I mean it's probably okay when we fix it overall. It should be a global thing. Uh, I've noticed that when you uh it might be a might be a positional thing where that where that little guy runs. So if it's just a simple tweak to the right, then yes, let's let's do that. I didn't even spot that. Well spotted, guys. So what I've noticed about this set is that when you uh, when you bring in, let me see if I can find it here. That's under environments. Uh, something about subway tunnel. There we go. If when you go and and look at this, there's the environment which has the preloaded scene. So that's this that has the tunnel and the train. And when you bring that in, it actually fits onto one another. But if you bring in the tunnel and the train separately, it looks like the train is too large for the for the rail so I think what they've done is they shrunk the train down so that it kind of fits in the preload. And the disadvantage of that is that also when you put a person inside the train that's inside the tunnel, everyone is 20% too large. So you have to kind of make that smaller. So uh, got to see how we can do that. Also, remember that old 3D trick, only fix what you can actually see. So as long as we see the train on the rails for the first 10 seconds, we're good. If it goes off the rails after that, we're not going to see it. We're going to be okay with that. Let's go and build our hero character. 
So I'm going to go and start with, um, I'm going to use Yvonne actually. I'm going to use the stream safe textures that are now available on the DAS store that let me load basically the Genesis 8 male, uh, sorry, female base character into the scene without getting into trouble for nudity. I do like that. I've, me and Darrell have been working really hard to uh, work on that. I'm going to use an outfit called uh, Pastel Goth. I've had that for a while. I haven't really had, uh, I didn't really uh, use it all that much. It's a beautiful outfit. It comes with separate textures. I'm going to use the default textures here. What I really like about it is that it comes with, it's not a defaults outfit, it comes with partial poses that uh, pose your character as well as the clothing into play. So I do, I do like that. Might have to make some small adjustments on the jacket there, but you know, that's, um, we'll leave that until later. I believe there's a bit of a foot pose going, isn't there? So these are all the fun, the partial poses here. I really like that. So they're they're subtle and they're only you know for certain parts of the figure. So you can you can pose your arms um, individually, and they're both for the clothing and for the figure. So I really really like that. It's very very nice a very nice thing to very nice thing. I'm glad to hear it, Chris. Awesome. I'm I'm glad you tried them out. That's that's really cool. Chris streams on Twitch over on Twitch, so it's kind of uh, he has this problem all the time. I remember you've made your own uh, stream safe textures, but you know it's it's all about how much how much work you want to invest into that. So yeah, I'm glad you you find uh, you find use for them. Let's go and put our custom character on that. I always think it's a good idea to put the to put the custom character, build everything in a separate scene, and then you can just merge that into your kind of master scene. Who would I say? Avon, right? With an E. Avon, there we are. Cookie made her. And I'll leave my stream safe materials on. I'm just going to go and apply the whole morph to it in case we do need to take the uh, take the jacket off and the, the clothing off and everything. Yeah, so that, that needs a little bit of a Needs a little bit of a tweak here, that jacket, but we're not going to worry about this. I just want to have her in the scene, and if the, the jacket needs, uh, needs fixing, I'm going to do that later. That's that. Let's go give her some hair while we're here. She can't be bald. I'm going to use Carla hair. Because it's nice and short. We don't have to worry about defaults. Because, you know, it all adds up time-wise. I think maybe she should have black hair. We have two black options to choose from. It'll look blacker in the final render. Yes, I might make an Yvonne morph just for the jacket. Um, I might try that in Marvelous Designer or in, in ZBrush, but that's, you know, that's not for today. That's not for today. This is our character. I'm going to go and save her out just as a scene. I might go and uh, make myself a new subfolder for that. Stream characters. And we're going to call her a hero in heroine there we go that's not a bad word i'm going to save this as a scene subset heroine v1 and sub scene means i'm going to save just what i've selected here so in my case it's only the figure and uh, and nothing else so i haven't got the um, film and draw options. I haven't got the render settings. They're all kind of still determined by the master scene. So <laughs> Brian gets carried away. <laughs> I appreciate it, Brian. It's good because you know there's there's always it's always good to have to have the products uh, kind of displayed that we're talking about. I might just shape the hair a little bit and make it a bit, you know, more wafty like this. There, I might do that. Uh, there's also, there's another thing I've just realized and that is that the, the pendulum that she's wearing here, that's part of the goth outfit. I just want to adjust that a little bit. I think this here, 
that's another a pendulum. I'm just going to make that invisible. Final adjustments when we have the pause. Goody. So sub scene subset again. Great. So that's our this is just our, our character in an A pose. Now to figure out what um how she's gonna do the pose in the scene, I'm gonna go and grab the Capscus Digital Inks uh poses that come with the whole bundle here. That's called the CDI Subway poses for Genesis 8. That's quite nice. Uh, there's one in which she is essentially grabbing the rail, this one here. I can't apply that because it goes directly into the position of the uh, of where the train carriage would load. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go and hold down control while applying the poles. And then this dialog comes up and that lets me eliminate the translation. So I'd like for her to do this right here. She's still kind of turning around here. That's That's also okay. I could now, if I wanted to, and I don't think I will, because we're, you know, I'm, I'm notoriously, uh, I'm notorious for running short. I could interpolate between with puppeteer. It's kind of if you want to follow along with uh, with puppeteer. I could go and interpolate between this pause and the mirrored version of that pause, like so, and another kind of idle pause, and see if I wanted to have her move her whole body while she's on the train. So shift from one foot to the other. That's kind of nice. So you can do that. This is done. Um, this is just mirroring a pose here. I do this with the scene tools by 3D Universe. I kind of like that. I like using that. If there's a if there's a pose that would be better suited uh, for on the other side, and this uh, the pose isn't included in the pose set, then you know it's very easy to mirror things. Also, uh, mirrors your own bits and pieces. So you know. So um, I will just use this, and before I save her, I might actually just go and save her now as a posed heroine, heroine posed. Because I will just leave her in place. I don't want to, you know, this is this is where the time really eats, eats up. I want to give her one expression as well. I didn't do that either. Uh, there is a uh, kind of a concerned expression <laughs> that we can use either with the face controls. That's a possibility. We do this with face controls because uh, I don't think I have anything currently that is That'll give kind of a concerned look. Let's do that then. I'll use face controls and give her a quick, quick concerned look. This here. Just because I really don't like that bland expression <laughs> that we're seeing there. So face controls is this rig that goes onto her face. There it is. I might make it invisible just so that we don't see it. But the product also comes with an amazing variety of poses, or so, sorry, expressions rather. And if they're a little bit too strong, I'm going to show you how to use Puppeteer to kind of dim them down. So I'll go and make myself kind of a little triangle fan and I'll go and uh, make the neutral position here in the middle for now. This is with the face control selected. And now, because I'm thinking she's she's a little concerned about what's happening on the train. There's there's robots, and she's the only human, so she's you know she's a little afraid. Let's see if we can find something here. Even if it's exaggerated, it doesn't really matter. You can just dial it down. Um, that could be interesting. So this is uh, this is very annoyed. I don't mean for it to be that annoyed. These are kind of these are more like yeah, fear. There we go. Fear is kind of what I'm. What I'm after fear not quite that much but that's okay do we that's that's too much that's also a different direction here that is that's nice we can use that so I might go and put another dot here uh, this is could this be cool yeah, that's a bit too awkward fear number five yeah I'm not sure <laughs> but that's cool I mean you know these 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 three will be will be enough because if I go and uh, go to the previous section now. If I go to this zero position, 
This is the neutral thing I had. And now I can go either to the exaggerated position or go back and forth as I see fit. You know, it just has to be something a little bit, uh, a little bit, little bit concerned. Not entirely sure what happened to her mouth there. I might just open that up a little bit. Just see what I like. Yeah, I think the mouth was was better when it was slightly open. She said maybe she's just a bit miffed because you know it's a subway commute, so maybe something like this. What, what whatever your favorite subtle uh, position is, that plus a mouth open type thing. Uh, I might do that with the regular uh, pause controls. Under here, mouth. Or even with the Vaseem, that's also an idea. I might do that. That's not really what I was after. Jaw open. I could, I could try that. Jaw open. Then just a little bit. I'm not sure. And maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe this is maybe this is what I want to do. So that's that's her expression now. <laughs> we'll use um, eyes and heads. We'll do that in situ when she's in the scene. But let's go and save this with the face controls um, selected as a pause for the face controls. There's, you know, there's a ton of other ways that you can do expression. So uh, I'll just call it expression one. Current frame only, and it's just the face controls. All right. So we've got her pose, we've got her expression. Let's see if we can load our original scene back in. And um, you know, correct the correct the train. Subway V two. I'm no. Uh, this is. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do this. It's. Um, uh, you put it into the first position of the train inside a null. You parent the null to the train, and then she'll just move with the train. And then I'll animate her inside the null. That's the plan, anyway. <laughs> so many things can always go wrong. And you can try to do this with any blocks as well. You can try to add uh, an expression, or sorry, a, a, like a moving pause and use an any block to do this. And then just loop that any block while she's on the train. That's also a possibility. So let's fix that train here. Subway train. Also keeping an eye on the timeline. Oh yeah, that is off, off track, isn't it? What happened here? What happened here? Well spotted, you guys. It's also got a bit of a. Does it? Does is it okay height wise? Looks like height's okay, but the but the left right thing really is not. There we go. Let me use the the sliders here. There. All right, and uh, let's just hope that by the time we get to to the trains frame 250, whoops, we probably don't see that anymore, but just to be on the absolute safe side, Let's just hope it is a linear deviation. Now oh, that happened. All right. Let's check kind of halfway in what happens here. 
Yep, halfway he's still on there. Kind of 100 frames in. This is more what we're what we're interested in. Oh, see there he goes. He goes off the rails then. Oh, that's interesting. So I wonder if there's a little kink somewhere in the in the whole in the whole bend there. Okay, well let's have a look what happens if we go look through the camera and make ourselves actually let's make ourselves a new camera. I'm going to go and make a duplicate of this camera. Or just make a make a brand new camera, just have it follow the train. I might just do that. So this can be like the camera, the camera, um, what do we call it? The track test cam. And I'll go and parent that to the train. And then when we go and look through it, we'll see where this thing deviates while the camera is also moving. So, yep, that's definitely, that's already moved away. I'm just trying to find out where that keyframe needs to be. So, look, it comes good after that. It kind of goes and goes and wiggles around. That's quite interesting. So, let me find a keyframe where it was okay. Again, namely... Well, namely here, that's where it was okay again. So then probably halfway through it, somewhere here. If we go and adjust the whole train now. And then hopefully that'll solve our issues. Where they come from, we don't, we don't really know. Do we, do we care? Do we want to know? No, we're good. Got other fish to fry. Yeah, it looks like it needs another adjustment over here. So it's okay here. This is something I hadn't seen coming. Then here, it looks like we need another adjustment. Oops. It's a rickety old train. What do we expect? These things happen. It kind of stays on the tracks. There's a little bit of futzing going on. But I think, you know, at this point, I think, are we in the train at this point? No, we're not, are we? Got to go and do another correction here. This is also where you're, where you're correcting yourself basically A, to death, and B, it'll look crap at one point if you're not super super careful so if it's just the left right movement i think we're just about okay here yeah so here we're still off the off the track aren't we eh. come on this is where another three hours of my life goes that we're not getting back. But hey, it's going to look awesome later. Not entirely sure what's happening here. Well, in the interest of time, I'm going to leave it like this and we'll fix it off the, off the stream. So I'm more interested in getting the, uh, getting the uh, character on the train now into the position that we said we're going to use. So let's, let's, leave, the, let's leave the tracks as they are for now. And, you know, hope I can fix it later. If that doesn't work, I can always go and, and take the tracks and basically animate the tracks to match the train. Ha ha ha. That's a possibility. Right, let's go and have a look at the... At the... Oh, that's that. The, at my passenger here. There she is. So currently she's not she's not moving and that's just this one character. So what I'll do now is I'll try and bring 
my hero character into a position in which he kind of holds this this pole here. Let's see how that goes. Oh, I should maybe also save my scene. <laughs> save, save, save. Subway V3. Alrighty. So stream characters, here she is, heroine posed. I'll go and alt drag her into the scene kind of here. And we'll already see that this isn't going to be the correct size. So she's going to be a little bit taller than all the other characters because I do remember having to reduce everyone down a little bit. <laughs> could be biscuits, could be. Could be that there was an issue with the duplication or the lining up process. That's true, actually. I had to kind of line up the, the extensions so that they would line up with the tracks. Otherwise, there would have been a gap in the tracks. Very good point. As long as we're on frame zero, I'm good. I'll go and close this down. Bring you up. No, not you. Uh, you. Yeah, so she is noticeably taller. Noticeably, I say. Let's go and line up her feet. And go move her over here. She could be the giant woman. And all the robots are afraid of her. I like that part of the story. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll just go make her 20% smaller. I think it was 20%. On scale, I think it was 80. Okay, better. I like it. So the skirt, we'll, we'll take care of that later. I think this, the rotation is probably okay. Yeah, is this, is this okay here? I think so. Skirt intersecting with the rail a little bit. Again, I might not fix this now. It's more about getting that, um, getting her to ride with the train and animate while she's on the train. So that's that's kind of my, my prim primary focus right now. So you then here, passenger woman, you can go away. You can probably actually, you can go out of the scene. Let's go take her out completely and uh, make sure this woman now goes and travels with us. So before we animate her. So uh, it would be it would be tempting to just go and move her into the whole subway group. But what could happen is that this is going to freak out the scale because I've just changed the scale of the character. If I were to do that, it might have dire, dire consequences. She would travel with the train, but she wouldn't, she probably wouldn't look very good. So as a, um, to get out of that, I find it helpful to create an empty or a null rather, with the default settings and in the, the null is going to be parented to the train and then our woman is going to be parented to the null so heroine heroine goes into the null and then the null itself is going to go onto the train group and that hopefully shouldn't do anything but it should still let us uh, move the train and the woman with it. If we go and zoom in onto her, yep, she's still in more or less the same position. She's she's changing a little bit. I'm not entirely sure why. That is uncool. That shouldn't happen. <laughs> I tell you that. And that also, of course, isn't exactly what I had planned for. Man, that's terrible. Because in my tests, this was working perfectly fine, of course. And now that we're trying it here, it isn't. What a shame. So I'm going to have to go and make small adjustments as we travel with her. I 
but they're small, so that's that's you know that's that's okay. Let's go and see when we actually see her with the camera, and also let's uh, let's see how much we uh, we see on the on the tracks. If there's anything we can see that the train is off the tracks now, hopefully not. Oh yeah, just before the camera hits. I can see that the train is very much off the track, so that needs to totally be uh, adjusted. So up until here, I don't have to worry about my um, about my uh, about my character. And from the moment we enter the train, I will have to do that. But that's cool. We can we can make a small adjustment because I've moved the position of the train. Uh, my entry gate here is no longer as it should be, which is a shame. So I might go back to the version I've made. Uh, before I've made that track change. This might be far enough away that we don't really notice. Uh, here I have to make this adjustment that she's in the position at that point when we see her. Uh, I like, kind of like where the camera's going here. And we exit kind of in the same place though. Yeah, cool, but just the, the entry into the, into the train, that needs to be changed. Let's do that, let's do that. We have, we have a few more minutes. Yes, and that I might just go and move the move the train tracks underneath the train to make that uh, to make that look handsome. Let's adjust this first here. So that with the camera, with my aspect frame on, and with my thirds guide on. So this is Z translate. So here, why still okay? Oh, it also helps. You can use all kinds of funky things. If you want to speed up this process in the viewport, you can use decimator to make the train um, lower in geometry. You can uh, switch things off. You can make. You can literally use uh, decimator to make these these people uh, much lower resolution. That'll speed things up. But again, it's all in the interest of time. I might just not do that. And then we exit out. Almost in the right position. Yeah, I think I need to go and uh, move the camera here. Just adjust that a little bit. So once we're here, we go slightly further back into here. I think the only the only big tip I can really give you is make sure you're always on the keyframes that you had set. And now we want the we want the camera to be out of here. So that should do the trick. And if you want to look around, like if you're hitting something with the camera, you want to uh, you want to maybe not show that. Then at the very end, you can have a little variation on where the camera pans. So you can go and say uh, you go in, and then at one point you set a keyframe where the camera looks to the right a little bit, and then slightly further down you make it go to the left a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's that's something that that might make this um, make the train ride even even more interesting. So I think aside from aside from the track adjustment and the slight animation adjustment, I'm thinking I might try and render a quick animatic out, and then we can at least see this uh, in a low resolution at a low frame rate and see if we're where we are in the ballpark. And then you know I can make adjustments, and uh, it also means I can uh, I can uh, answer some more questions while this is rendering, and then you know we get to that. Let's do that. Let's go and put this one will be. Uh, scene four, because I do like answering questions a lot. While this is rendering, I can always use a second instance of Das Studio if you know if there's anything that I want to um, that you guys want to know that I can demonstrate in a second instance. That will that will work. So as I said before, instead of thirty frames, I'm going to maybe use uh, ten frames a second, and then we only have two hundred seventy three frames in total to render. On my render settings here. I'll go and use the viewport as a render engine. So instead of um, NVIDIA iRay 
or 3D light or whatever, I'm just going to use the viewport, which then will use filament. That's the one I'm using. Uh, 720 by 1280 should be okay. And we're using frame zero to frame 233, which is, you know, what it is right now. I'll go and call this one uh, Animatic V4, I'll say. And before I do that, there's also, I'm going to bring a few of these things back that are currently uh, disabled so on the on the tunnel i think i'm going to go and bring the tunnel uh, wall back the side wall there's on the train there's a few bits missing here <laughs> so like the walls and the roof and i think there's also some doors missing if i remember correctly Let's have a quick look. I think the doors are switched off uh, as well. Oh, yeah, no doors, so we can still see outside, which might not be which might not be great. But for an animatic, probably forgivable. So let's let's go leave that. Save and go. Have him render this thing. This is always my favorite part: seeing something, um, you know, in the flesh later on. Let's go do that. Hey, hit. Oh, yeah. As what do we want to save it? I'm going to go and save it as a movie just so that we can watch it. If it was a real render, I would go and save this. Also, select the camera that you want to render. If this was a real render, I would save it as an image sequence and then compose it in. Um, in uh, in premiere as an image sequence you can also use photoshop for that but the big benefit of that really is that you can go and re-render sections that may have gone awry whereas when you have a movie then it's difficult to drop things in there's also the compression that the that the movie brings so it's um, it's one of those things Okay, so my mods, what my mods have done is while we were talking, they have fished out some questions um, and uh, put them on a message board. So I'm going to have a look uh, through them now. I think Duval, okay, cool. I've already answered your question. How do you get the train to uh, slowly speed up? Um, yes, that's that's one way to do it. There's uh, the with the um, with changing from uh, from. Um, from the logarithmic to linear that's that's one way to do it you can also if you need it to speed up in increments you can also go and uh, and try that i'll just use a second instance while this is rendering it should be okay you can also uh, set multiple keyframes and uh, and then adjust the position slightly so this um it's kind of, it's not an exact science uh, if you blend with tcb which is this logarithmic or ease in ease out then uh, you can you can blend keyframes with one another. You can basically go from one to the other, and just uh, set your own set your own piece. See, see if I can see if I can demonstrate that. <laughs> he says, <laughs> maybe maybe not, <laughs> but maybe I can do that. So if I go with uh, with a primitive here. And maybe may I could make it a sphere, just one meter in size. Here he is. Give him a little color. And let's say we give this uh, 300 frames. Then you could say, so uh, with the sphere selected, first keyframe is where you start. Then the second keyframe is say at, uh, let's say a hundred. And at a hundred, you maybe want this guy to travel, uh, I don't know, I'm just gonna make it up, like minus 500. Or maybe minus, minus, uh, minus 200. So now he travels from here to there at this speed. And if you don't do anything else, he kind of speeds up and then slows down again. So what you could uh, what you could do then is kind of try another keyframe at which then from here to uh, to 200, he would travel not another 200. He would then go and travel um, twice as twice as much plus the one that he had before, so that's then 600. So if you do that, you'd see this this uh, this kink here. 
So moves, moves here, and then moves, moves even speeds up. So now it looks like if you do this in short enough intervals, as if this guy is moving faster and faster. So the next one is then uh, at frame 300, where he would then go the the 600 that he's had before, but uh, plus plus two, so it'll be minus 1200. So this would now make him visibly speed up from from one to the other and because of that logarithmic blending it would go and just uh, just you know speed up increasingly and eventually just be you know extremely fast if you know what i mean so this uh, this is a way that you can kind of fake it if you needed something to visibly accelerate um, beyond the point of what you had um, what the logarithmic thing can do for you Sebastian, yes, very good uh, question. How do you render things? Uh, I do render them in as uh, image sequences, and then I put them together. I can actually show you what something like that uh, looks like in Premiere if your game. There's something um, there. So you can use Photoshop for this. You can use uh, DaVinci Resolve for this. You can use all kinds of other things for that. But um, Premiere is kind of my thing of choice, and it allows you to go... Um, it allows you to uh, import image sequences natively. I I'm not sure if DaVinci Resolve lets you do that. Um, let's see, my title sequence for my game stream, for example, that was something that I've just recently rejigged with new posters in the foyer and all that. And uh, let me see if I can show you what, I might just go and import an image sequence like I normally would. So I do this by going to import and then finding the folder in in which the the rendered images are. So this is like this, I think this is the public stream the, for, for DAS. This is literally for this stream. I can go and select the first image and then there's this thing at the bottom that says, is this an image sequence? And as long as they're sequentially numbered, which DAS Studio will do for you, as long as they're all in one folder and they're sequentially numbered, you can just select like, the first one, hit open, and then Premiere or Photoshop are gonna work out um, what this is. So this is now the footage. And if I turn that into a clip, uh, sequence from clip, then this is what it looks like. And it plays back as if it was just a regular um, you know, as if it was regular footage. But under the hood, it's literally one frame at a time. And the beauty of that is that you that you get to say, well, say between, if we think in frames here, between frame 270 and frame 300, one of my computers froze and this section needs to render again. Or at this close-up, I can see something that isn't quite kosher and I need to go and you know redo these 30 frames. Then you can just go and do that, uh, make the change that you need and then drop it in um, as, a, as a change and then your image sequence will pick it up. So that's, um, that's, that's really nice. It's a really nice way of working. And if you have an M2 drive, this was in Blender, by the way. If you have an M2 drive, then it goes relatively stutter-free. Yes, yeah, so I always do that. I also like rendering uh, images out on multiple computers so that maybe one computer takes care of frames 1 to 300, then another computer parallel to that takes care of 301 to 600. Once again, I have a plan that I said um, uh, that, that tells me what I'm rendering where, so it's kind of it's important to do that. Uh, Marshall Johnson and Duval, um, if it is a sub scene, can you update the character design in your master scene automatically? No, that's not how this works. Sadly, um, DAS Studio isn't quite clever enough to do that. It's not like a Blender, um, a Blender link. So Blender has two versions of uh, grabbing a scene or grabbing an object from another sub scene, so to say. In Blender, you can say, would you like to import this as is is? Or would you like to just point to that original object? And the advantage of that is that when you change the original object, your next project that references it will also be automatically updated. But Death Studio doesn't do that. The moment you say either a file merge, that's that's that. Or if you were to go into your uh, content library and um, and uh, alt click and drag a scene in like this, or you would go and uh, double click a sub scene into that, then 
it will be imported as it is and saved in that in that kind of frozen state. So if you update the previous scene, the next master scene that you've imported it in, that it doesn't have any references to it. Uh, Cienfuegos, I've, uh, I have actually scaled the characters down instead of the train. The question was, uh, you said the train isn't to scale. What scale did you set it to to correct it? Yes, I've actually left the train as it was because it was, let me show you this, if I go and bring this um, into the second scene here. Um, if you bring in the this master scene here, and you bring in the uh, the train prop individually. I think the the scale for the Genesis figures that's just for the train prop, but the train inside the tunnel, the the the, the train. I think they've shrunk that down. If I brought these two things in uh, side by side, it looks like this is actually what it looks like uh, before here. Oh, before I've meddled with it and probably got the got the track slightly misaligned. Um, yeah. So before before that happened, uh, if I go and put the Put the where's the train? Here's the train. Yeah, if I go and take the the subway train set prop and put that next to it, I think we'll see that it's a different uh, different size. I think they've just done this to uh, to make it fit into the tunnel. Yeah, so the the one on the left is a little bit uh, it's further away, but it's also um, different scale. I think. Come on! Oh, he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to move. Oh, it looks like these are the same size. Maybe, what? which one did I grab then? Did I grab him out of the props? Could that be? Out of transportation, that's the one I've grabbed. Let's have a few trains next to one another. Yeah, I think this one is the one that's made for, uh, for the regular Genesis scale. But I guess it didn't quite fit into the into the tunnel, so I just found it easier to scale the figures down uh, other than rather than scale the tunnel up. It's like, you know, mother train there. <laughs> Dioval, uh, shouldn't locking the scale of the figure help? Good question. I don't really know is the uh, is the honest is the honest answer. Where are we here? 130 frames. Okay, no worries. That's, you know, ticking along nicely. You're welcome. No problem. You're welcome. Ascania. Yes. This is the honest answer. Oh, that is nice. Look at that. Tux, thank you so much for letting me know. Good to see you, by the way. Yes, I'm not, I, I don't have DaVinci Resolve. I don't really use it, but I know that it's a, it's a big favorite of, um, uh, for many people because it's free and you know it's uh yeah it's, it's quite powerful it's a little bit uh difficult to get started with uh, but i suppose that's true for so many editing applications i mean i kind of i wouldn't say i've grown up with premiere but i've used it for well over 20 years and it's kind of um it's i suppose when you when you learn a certain way like photoshop you know once you grasp photoshop you go i can't really see myself using something else now so one of those things yeah, if you have any other questions, please um, please let me know. Brian uses... What do you use again, Brian? You use... Uh, for your videos, you use um, DaVinci Resolve for editing, but there was something else I think you tried, wasn't there? I can't quite remember. I've tried Vegas at one point, and that wasn't for me. Vegas was not for me. Yeah, scale is definitely off. Yeah, it's one of those things, which is, which is kind of a shame. <laughs> Dartenberg, hello there. How you doing, sir? I didn't see you there. No, it's because you know, I, I'd say, if I'm ignoring anyone, this is not a deliberate attempt. Please, uh, you know, don't uh, don't get me wrong. But if there's a lot of chat, then uh, it's very difficult for me to um, uh, to uh, to spot your questions. If you do have a question, please let me know. I can, now I have the time. It's good. We have we have time, which is rare because usually I overrun by like thirty minutes to half an hour. It's kind of thirty minutes to an hour even. Very good to see you. 
I see you have a website now, which is quite nice. I've seen that recently. Darton back and I go go back a few years where casual form acquaintances, I think is, is the correct term. I've been a very avid uh, Carrara user back in the day. I don't know, do you still use Carrara? I do still use it occasionally, but yeah, not so much as, uh, as as I was one day. So one of those things. Um, Howard Chai, I suppose I would, I would scale the, the thing that's in the minority rather than the things that are in the majority. So if I were to scale up the train, every piece of tunnel wall and anything that's inside the tunnel, that would, that's more work than scaling down one thing. So in, in this case, I only really scaled down two things. I scaled down the hero character and I scaled down, I scaled down the one robot character. All the instances follow. So I didn't scale down 20 characters. I just scaled down one and everything that was an instance of that character was also scaled down. It's kind of, that's kind of cool about instances. If I go, let me go and do, uh, let me go and uh, remove all this. And, uh, and show you how this how this instancing thing works with multiple instances. So I'll use a I'll use a primitive again. Maybe our favorite sphere. Here he is. And I'll give him nice color again, like so. And he is a, he's not quite oriented correctly, but that's that's quite cool. That's quite cool. So there's two ways of creating an instance in Das Studio. The first one is under create. And then you can go over here to new node instance. That'll make exactly one duplicate. And if I do that, it'll it'll ask you um, uh, what you want to do with it. I would always suggest to copy it rather than apply the default settings. I've had this in the past that with the default settings, there's a slight offset to where your node instance is. But sometimes you want the instance to be in the exact same spot so that you can then go and um, uh, move it like a you know a plane in the ocean that needs to kind of uh, uh, that needs to snap in place. So you sometimes you want that in the exact same place. I'll go and do that, and then I see nothing apparently, but that's because they're in the same place. So I'll see my spheres here, and my other instance is now that has this little ghosty icon here. But it moves, and it can be you know it's now it's now an independent object to a point. So I can apply certain things to it like i can move its placement its translation i can i can change its rotation and i can change its scale but there's certain things i can't do with an instance so i can't go and um uh, i can't put a different texture on it for example it has to be exactly the same as the master instance so this is my instance i can make that bigger and i can move it elsewhere but if i go and grab my regular sphere and scale that up or down then uh, oh interesting usually <laughs> that should happen to the instance it kind of didn't do that at this point very interesting very interesting you always learn something new maybe that happens in the multiple instance thing sometimes you need more than one instance so if i go and remove that or just scale the group. I can't remember how I did it now. Uh, the other option is to go and create uh, node instances. So that's the second option here. Uh, and the default that comes up here is uh, how many you want to create. So 10 is the default. You can change it to whatever you like. I'll go and uh, and use apply default settings this time. And then what Das Studio does is it goes and makes me multiple which is, you know, kind of nice. And so each of these is now, they're all in a, in a group here and you can change them all around. There's, there's scripts that take care of this uh, functionality like uh, Howie Fox Ultra Scatter, very, very cool thing. So you can do that. So this is essentially what I've done with the robot characters. Uh, I, I had one guy and then I just uh, made several instances and then just placed them into the correct uh, sections. But so the thing with an instance is now, if I go and change the surface color of my main object to orange, for example, then uh, all instances will follow that. So there's no, I can't have uh, one instance this color, one instance that color, that doesn't work. So this is, uh, this is how they're linked. So it's, um, yeah, it's, that's kind of how it works. I love ultra scatter, absolutely.
And this is really cool if you have something. So your ultra scatter uses this and then takes it to the next level by saying, where would you like your instances to be replicated? Like, um, do you want to replicate that over a plane? Does the plane have a distribution shader on it? Like, you know, clump things more here than there. So it's awesome for uh, grass and flowers, for nature stuff. You could draw out a pattern where there is uh, where you have where you want trees to grow, and then you can you know have trees along the side of a, uh, you know of a of a path, for example. Yes, absolutely. And yes, absolutely. That is the that is my recommendation for the instancing plugin as well. Ultra scatter and um, instancify. Absolutely. Dalton back. Did you have a question? Do please, you know, drop it in the chat. <laughs> and how are you keeping, by the way? How's my other instance of Das Studio keeping? Are we are we at the end of the render? Yes, there we go. Cool. So this has rendered myself a movie now, which is nice. And it asks me uh, where do how do I want to save it? With this is fine. Intel YUV codecs good. I'll just go and save it there. Then it goes and compresses all my images. So under the hood, Das Studio has actually rendered an image sequence itself in its temp folder, and now it's generating the movie from it. It also applies compression because uncompressed uh, image sequences that's going to be that's going to be a bit um, drastic to play back for most uh, for most things. Let me go and reveal that here. That's the one. Animatic V4. No, that's not the one. Yes, that's the one. This is our handy work. Oh, file isn't playable. <gasps> My God, why not? Is that red X anything to go by? think I've run out of cloud storage, but that shouldn't really make a massive difference. I mean, so what? It doesn't go into, into OneDrive. It should still go on my local hard drive, right? Have we just wasted valuable minutes? I'm extremely disappointed with my, with OneDrive, by the way. Like, literally extremely. Man, that is, that is such a shame. We have to do this again? Damn you, OneDrive! Yes, I'm literally this close to some... Well, not really this close. I'm basically signing up to Dropbox this evening because this is driving me bananas. It takes... It doesn't sync via the... Um, doesn't sync via LAN, so if I have multiple render nodes, it syncs everything via uh, via the internet. And you know, two gigabyte scenes. That's just gonna that's just gonna be terrible. So, man, that's terrible, isn't it? So I'm saving it to my desktop now. There is enough space. Oh, <laughs> bear with me, folks. <laughs> yes, the sale. Ah, oh, you've missed it by two minutes. The sale has ended two minutes ago. If you were if you were good enough, <laughs> that is terrible, isn't it? My goodness. Yes, if you've, if you've missed it two minutes ago, there is another sale going though, so don't be disappointed. There's always another sale. The best thing to do is sequence. Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, shall we do that? Let's, let's do that. Let's exit. Exit. No. Cancel. No, 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 no. It's fine. Cancel. It's fine. Let's do image sequence. You're absolutely right. <laughs> and then we'll just use Premiere to do this. So. Uh, I'll just call this animatic folder on my desktop. Don't worry about it. OneDrive. And I'm going to go and say uh, image series. That's it. Oh, good. I have to go and uh, put this in again. That's fine. I'm totally okay with it. Animatic. And this is going to be uh, Subway V4. Boom. Okay. Sorry about this, folks. Hey, we have more time for questions, which is good, which is good. Usually we don't do that. Indeed, Julia, absolutely. Or we play a bit of, you know, um, Monsters Expedition. That's also good. I'm, def I'm, I'm kind of addicted to that game right now. It's good stuff. Oh, my goodness. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Very cool. So what else do you want to talk about? 
I mean, you know, we have about like, you know, 10 minutes left here. No, actually, I could just I could just render this out and then I might just go and post that animatic uh, in the forum later. How's that? And I can also go investigate this whole scale thing, where exactly things went off the rails, so to speak. Let's do that. Let's let's bring it to an end here. And I hope I will see you guys again soon. So uh, don't forget, if you're a Platinum Club member, you can go and uh, enter the Season Pass contest, I believe. Let's have a look at that. That is That was very cool. I didn't know this, but uh, there's the official rule state that if you have a pirate-themed image that you want to submit you can do so from now until the end of the month it's very cool uh, this was a platinum this was a season pass contest but uh, platinum plus members can also enter now and you can grab first place 150 dollars in store credit or second place 100 dollars in store credit third place 75 dollars in store credit fourth to tenth place ten dollars in store credit the only thing it needs to be it needs to be pirate themed and submitted to the gas to the das gallery with a hashtag season pass two there you go some more goodies up for grabs why not make full use of that my friends it was absolutely a pleasure and it's always a joy to see you and uh, to speak to you maybe we can make this a weekly event and uh, just you know play around we've currently scheduled this to be once a month uh, on the das channel there's a little holding page about that brian's going to post a link to now that you can catch up on past live streams so once a month until the end of the year and then we'll see what happens my friends it was a pleasure and a privilege. I'll hope I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.